Hello guys, welcome to the channel, Bob here. Uh, back in EverQuest on Project 1999, and I can't even remember if I've ever done any footage of, of this character. Uh, his name is Fizzwell, he's almost almost level 30. <coughs> Magician. Um, yeah, and this is another example of why, uh, of why I never get anywhere. But yeah, yeah, another character that I've leveled to around level 30. <laughs> if, if, if I hadn't have done any of this, as I've probably said before, you know, I probably have a couple of level 60s by now. Or maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe one level 60 and, you know, another one well on the way. But, yeah, this this is a character that I kind of log into when I'm a bit, you know, not quite sure what the hell's going on anymore. And I've been feeling a bit like that in EverQuest recently. I haven't really played it much for a couple of weeks. Uh, but I've kind of come back to it. And, yeah, I just log this character in just for the same difference too, really. Uh, I do like the magicians. As I said, I don't know if I've recorded any footage with Fizzwell before, but I do. I really love the pets. Um, unfortunately, there just isn't enough meat on the bones, as it were, for the character to, um, to just sort of keep me going with it. You know, I know you can say that about practically any class I've played, essentially. But uh, but yeah, this. <laughs> uh, for this particular video, this, this is just me coming back after a couple of weeks trying to get my head around things again. Uh, and it's difficult, you know, when you have a couple, when you have a week or two off playing EverQuest, because the because the progression is so slow, you kind of come back and, particularly if you've been playing another MMO where where the p progression might be quicker, you know, you come back and it feels like you're just banging your head against a wall until you get used to it again, you know. Um, and that's kind of what I'm what I'm doing at the moment. Um, yeah, but as I said, this is a character that I log into now and again. He's been level 29 for ages. You know, I'm talking like months and months and months. I can't remember the last time I actually can't remember when I got 29. I think I kind of raced to 29 to get my new pet, and also got my torch, my um, focus torch, torch of Alna, uh, and then that was it really. <laughs> kind of didn't. <laughs> he stopped there. Um, it was also the class that I created to try and um, to have a class where I essentially didn't buy anything for him uh, particularly where I kind of went and farmed everything myself uh, as you can see that's working out brilliantly at the moment because uh, I'm pr pretty much wearing cloth armor and my old robe uh, now this is oh there we go it's quite weird I've had a couple of times I've had a mob uh, you know less than 10% basically um, not run quite weird I don't know if there's a little bug there maybe I should probably report that but but yeah a couple of times I've, I've had a mob um, uh, so sort of less than 20 as I said e even there sort of you know sort of about, about around 10% and I've reclaimed a pet and, and the mob has then sort of come on me and attacked uh, the mob has um, then started to run but not but not until uh, you know it's had a couple of rounds on myself there and as you can see I mean I mean that mob went down to um, well well below 20 and, and it wasn't and it was still beating on my pet so I don't as I said I don't know if there's a bit of a a uh, bit of a bug there, but we'll, uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. There's Grizzle Knot there, by the looks of it. Grizzle Knot, dark blue. I'll, I'll leave him up because he's obviously Shaman, one of the Shaman Totemic Armor quests. Uh, I think he's something else as well, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll leave him there. So, yeah, as I was saying, you know, you kind of, you have some time off EverQuest and you come back and you feel like you're banging your head against the wall for a, just for a short period of time. Uh, the, you know, the um, the experience is coming really slowly and whatnot, but eventually you kind of, you get back into the swing of things again. Um, but also, I kind of, when you have a period of time off from the game, you kind of, you lose sight of your short term and, lot well, your goals really. I mean, I logged in Mugwort. And he's at a camp at the moment, and I'll show you that camp in the next video. It's not a particularly interesting camp, to be perfectly honest with you, but I'll, I'll show you it anyway. But you log in after a week or two, and you kind of you, you lose track of what you were doing, you know, what your goals were, and you kill a cup, you kill a mob a couple of times, and you know, you gained a couple of percent experience, and you're thinking, bloody hell, you know, what, what's it all for? What am I doing it for? <laughs> um, but then you get back into the gist of things, and I think what I need to do is just just set myself a couple of short-term goals again. Uh, Mugwort is currently in a hell level. Uh, I'm still playing Mugwort as a shame as my shaman. Um, a couple of times I've I've considered swapping over to Bug Rot, um, but I'm still not sure on that. But I'll uh, yeah I'll you know that'll be something that comes out of the wash in a, in another video. 
Um, I kind of, I mean, a, a while back I sort of went through a similar sort of period and I kind of said to myself, well, it doesn't, you know, and a couple of you guys said actually, well, it doesn't really matter what you do, you know, just don't worry about it too much if you, as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. Uh, eventually you'll get there, if it's this year or next year, you know. <laughs> Ultimately you'll make it eventually, That that's what I kind of find. Um, yeah, but, but that's kind of, I think what I need to do is get back into... Uh, Mashaman in some form and just set myself some short term goals just to get going again, you know, get a, get a, a bit of momentum b uh, built up. But this is a character that I sort of turn to just when I'd want something completely different. Uh, in this case, just being uh, especially lazy, I think is probably the, uh, is probably the thing. Um, but I could sort of, I mean, there are, there are certain things that sort of bring on the slight sort of malaise as well in, in, uh, Nostrolo, he's not, he, he's not, uh, no, he's indifferent, okay. Yeah, there's, there's certain things that bring on the malaise as well, I have to say. I've built, I've sort of ran the whole class thing again. I mean, I've, I've been watching, I was watching some sort of uh, raiding videos, um, some kind of old ones uh, that, are, that are sort of about, and um, it's interesting watching those because you, you kind of, you soak up what everyone's doing, uh, you know, and a lot of this stuff's not rocket science, a lot of the responsibility sort of falls on you know the leader really and the pullers I think um, that seems to be where, where a lot of the responsibility lies getting those things right and giving the right sort of you know instructions um, so I was watching uh, some, some sort of old raiding videos and a couple of things kind of spring to mind first of all um, you know you sort of I don't know if anyone else has, has sort of done it but you kind of consider you think to yourself is it for me you know I mean as a as a 43 year old man you know is is setting sitting in Ventrilo or whatever piece of software it happens to be, you know, taking instructions from, uh, you know, another man, maybe in their 20s or 30s, who are, clear, who are clearly kind of more invested in the game than you. I mean, I love the game, but, you know, not to the point where um, it's kind of almost like your life, you know, it, it it's... You wake up in the morning, and an EverQuest is kind of there, and that's that's all that's there, you know. And it, and, and certain, I'm, and I'm I'm not one to sort of judge and say, well, I think that's sad and whatnot, because you know, gaming is a big part of my life, and I wake up in the morning, and <clears throat> you know, amongst many other things that I have to think about, <laughs> gaming is one of the things I think about. But yeah, it's you know, someone who who doesn't wake up in the morning, and an EverQuest is. Um, or, or any other MMO, you know, is you wake up in the morning and that's kind of what you're going to be doing today, you know, uh, as opposed to anything else sort of outside of your computer, you know, it's it's a difficult marriage, I think, probably. I don't know if I don't know if all people that raid are that type of person, you know, the people that wake up um, and EverQuest is pretty much going to be their day, you know, I'm not sure if you can raid, can you raid casually? I've got absolutely no idea, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, maybe you can't, you know. I'm, I just, I just don't know. I've never been in the situation where I've, where I've done it. So, you know. Um, but yeah, but if it's, so it's an interesting. It throws up some interesting uh, questions because I think, I mean, looking at the stuff that I've been watching, you know, it's very interesting. You know, and you get to see zones you haven't seen before. You get to play the game at a more, a more tactical level. You know, there's certainly a lot more to think about. There's a lot more organisation involved. Um, and while I can't say that I admire people who go to those lengths and, you know, um, have that time investment, it's certainly quite interesting, you know, and, and it's from a gaming, just from a purely from a gaming point of view, I'd imagine it's quite interesting to do because it's, yeah, the, the game itself becomes, immediately becomes more tactical. You need to be more aware of your class and, and, and what's going on around you. But yes, yeah, so, so that's the first thing. I kind of look at it and I think to myself, well, you know, do I fit in? You know, as someone who doesn't wake up in the morning and EverQuest is pretty much, you know, what you're going to be doing with your your, set, your day, uh, is, would, would I fit in? You know, is it, is it something that, that I would, would, do I want to fit in? I guess that's a sort of a lot of uh, getting a bit heavy. <laughs> Maybe I'm being going into it a bit too much. But but yeah, I mean, it's these sort of thoughts that I've had and, I'm you know, I'd be quite surprised if other people hadn't had a similar thought. So... Yeah, I'm just uh, just expressing them, but, but that's the first thing that I that I thought when I saw the raid footage. You know, do I do I have the investment in the game? Um, is it? I guess it, you know, is it fair to, to to be to go and 
be involved in that kind of thing when you're not as invested as everyone else when you don't take it as seriously well, I don't know. I mean, these things crop all sorts of strange social questions you know it's <laughs> it's quite if you when you think about it and maybe <laughs> think about it too much yeah it's quite it's uh it's quite interesting you know it's uh the, the whole yeah should, should you really be doing it if you're not as invested i, I guess the thing is that you unless i don't know you know maybe maybe you, you would only do it if you were if you're invested you know I, I mean i'd quite like to do it but i don't know if you can do it purely from a point of a view of I quite, i'm quite interested in the, the game mechanics and how it works and, and that side of things you know um i guess you're going to put a lot of time in um i guess you've got to be willing to sort of wake up and maybe get involved at, at certain times and again you know so i mean that, that, i think that's the thing with everquest isn't it is it gets to a point where uh the, the people that progress and and make pro you know make progress in the raid scene are real are people who can wake up at five o'clock in the morning you know to sort of track a mob and stuff you know it's and i guess at that point well i guess at that stage in your life that's maybe that's really all you're gonna have i suppose really i mean can you have a family and a job and wake up at five o'clock in the morning to <laughs> to track a, a raid mob i'm not sure but anyway that was the first thing that was the first question that sort of froze up to me anyway is you know would I, can i be invested in it and uh and would it be fair for for me or anyone else you know to sort of get involved in it if you're not really able to to put the time in i mean certainly i i think probably uh as i as i get up there uh, i think maybe just as an experiment you know it, maybe uh it'll be interesting to see if, if it is possible for me to do get involved in some raiding and, and do some raiding um but not <coughs> yeah but not but not really have that i don't know M maybe you know only be able to put in a certain amount of time you know is, is it is it possible i think probably not you know from, from what i've seen of the raiding from what i've sort of you know watched and, and heard and sort of read about read about the raiding scene um I think you've got to be willing, to a certain extent, to make EverQuest your, yeah, your family and your job and your your life for that, for that period of time. You know, however, however long you're willing to do it. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, if anyone has got any views on that, uh, yeah. If you've got any experiences, then let me know. But I'm certainly not not knocking it. You know, I'm I'm not one to sit here and criticise someone for something they've decided to do. That's not not why we're here. But it was just a, you know, just a just a, a thought that sort of occurred to me but the other thing as well watching watching a, a raid is quite interesting from a class point of view because you can sit there and watch what people are doing and you can you can almost decide well you can you know you can sit there and think to yourself what what would i like to do in a raid situation you know what and i guess also that kind of extends slightly down to a group setting as well you know what would i like to be doing in this raid would i like to be dealing damage you know would i like to be buffing buffing and slowing you know would like to be sort of crowd control tanking it's interesting and i kind of looked at it and i <laughs> as you can probably imagine i didn't really come to any any great conclusions you know as to what i'd like to be doing um i quite like the as i quite yeah, see that mob was about to come to come for me then i quite like the aspect of being in your face and sort of hitting things i think to be honest with you from i think it's kind of got to a point now where um Although the expectation is for Project 1999 to be around, um, you know, for quite some time still, um, and, and it's perfectly possible for me to sort of look at a raid and think, well, actually, you know, I've just seen the role that I would like to do in in a group and a raid. You know, sort of now it's probably a bit late and a bit unrealistic. I don't think I'd kind of want to go through 60 levels of a character now, you know, and. Uh, sort of with a view of this is what i kind of like to do in a raid uh, because when i got there I, I don't actually know if you know if, if i'd be able to raid let's see i guess that's the thing but yeah I'm kind of getting off track a bit but it's quite interesting to see how characters work and then you can and then you kind of look and think to yourself well actually that's the role that i'd quite like to be doing um yeah and, and maybe that's maybe that's the one way of doing it maybe it's a maybe that's a sort of a, a bit of advice to to anyone coming to the game um, coming to the server is maybe I've just watched videos first you know and watch what classes do within a group and what they can do solo and maybe make your decision based on that you know what do you like to do because I imagine it's probably quite I know it's something that comes up quite often on 
on the forums you know what's sort of best class to start off with you know is a what is it realistic to start a warrior for your first class and blah 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 that kind of thing so yeah but i think watching videos uh, certainly gives you uh, i think it will give you more of an idea but yeah so that's, that's kind of what i took out, took from watching some a few kind of raid videos um and also watching a couple of raid videos in a different game you know just uh do you have the time are you that sort of person you know do you are you able to invest the time uh, it'd be interesting when i get there i kind of i mean I, to be honest with you i'm kind of half expecting um one of the reasons I kind of play solo of all characters is because my expectation is that I would uh, at the moment my expectation is that I would get to into the level 50s uh, and really just discover that um, yeah the, the raiding side of the game is pretty much a no-no for myself so I you know I want to be in a situation where I've got a class that um, that can still do stuff but maybe that would actually be maybe getting to those kind of levels and again I'm not sure if it's a subconscious thing you know the reason reasons for me quite liking to play lower level characters and i have to say one of the things about playing the different classes that i have played is that i've quite enjoyed all of them you know in in the various forms and i've quite enjoyed being at at sort of certain levels you know maybe it's because it's just comforting <laughs> for me as you know as i said for for my my sort of my investment in the game it's just easier for me to be doing that uh, maybe I'll find that when I get into if if I get to the high levels into the fifties, you know, maybe that's where the maybe where, that's where the finish point for me for the for, for the game will come for me. You know, well I've kind of made it into the fifties. I've kind of realised realistically that this is not you know this part this part of the game is not for me. And then I guess you'd have to decide, as it were, just continuing in newbie noob, noobsville, you know, for the rest of your time in the game, or, or is that kind of, you know, is that is the game, is that it, you know, is the, uh, um, is that a point where you say, well, I, I've come back to sort of Project 1999, I've had a go, I've kind of enjoyed my year or two that I've been here, but, you know, I kind of realise maybe that, you know, um, it depends really, I guess it depends on if other games come, come along as well and distract you, uh, I mean, I've, um, I've recently uh, pre-ordered Elder Scrolls Online, which you might find surprising. I kind of find it quite surprising myself. Or I did find it surprising up until the previous... Um, I was, let me go back to a point first. I completely forgot. This was going to be a character I was going to farm everything myself, but I didn't. <laughs> and he's actually literally wearing all cloth armour. And he's starter robe. Um, so as you can see, I've, he's, I've gained absolutely nothing from an item point of view with him. Um, apart from the torch of Alna, that I did actually do myself. I think did I? I think I, I think I'm sure I did. I did take him to Nagina, but I also took Bugrot to Nagina, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think I might have done. But anyway, yeah, that's the only magic item I've got. I think have I? Have I I've got a bloodstone earring, which is plus four save versus fire. Uh, I think so. I might, might have given me that, but, <laughs> but I think that's the only item. It's probably why I find myself running out of mana quite a lot, because uh, the pets are quite mana intensive. Uh, you know, because I haven't given any, given, given him anything. Uh, no twinky stuff. It's uh, yeah, I find the mana quite low, but that's okay. Um, yeah, but I was, I've kind of, you know, I've completely lost track now. What was I going to say? I flipped from <laughs> something to uh yeah that's what i was i was talking about elder scrolls online yeah i kind of uh i mean i was i had no intention of pre-ordering elder scrolls online until i played the last beta and i, and I really enjoyed it actually um from a challenge point of view kind of challenges the challenge there's challenge there you know you got you got some you get some world bosses you come across that are pretty difficult to fight some of the dungeons are quite difficult but generally the you know the uh uh, the um, the generic mobs that you fight when you're just generally going around the world are, are pretty simple to kill. You can kill them in groups quite easily, and there's no real challenge in in that regard. So from a challenge point of view, and I think from a game mechanics point of view, it you know it doesn't touch EverQuest at all. Um, but it's very but it, it feels a bit like Skyrim. It's a bit weird actually because a, a lot of people before I started playing it, a lot of the people were saying you know the game actually started out as a more of a traditional MMO. Um, and then I think, you know, as people do, you know, the, the people with the big, the biggest, biggest voices, you know, they started complaining in beta, saying they wanted it to be a bit more like Skyrim. 
So I think they tried to then make it a bit more like Skyrim, and, and they dropped some of the uh, they dropped some of the kind of the MMO, you know, the MMO kind of traditions that you you, you you generally find to make it a bit more like Skyrim. So at the moment, it kind of feels a bit like a hybrid um, of the two games. But what I quite liked about it was that I, as I've said before, I'm sure you all know, I, I quite like um, just existing within an MMO world. You know, it's um, it, that's kind of that's kind of enough enough for me. You know, it's uh, if it's got the challenges of EverQuest um, and the, and the, the the thing you know the the little um, the little things that sort of you know make EverQuest EverQuest, and that's fine. But if it, if it hasn't got that, I do quite like just being in an MMO world. Uh, and and the the Elder Scrolls Online world is very nice looking, um, very interesting to explore. Um, some of the some of the quests are you know fairly interesting. Uh, some of the ones that I was doing, I, I, I quite liked. You know, I mean, there was a. They've kind of changed the start of the game, so you don't have to go through the starter island. Uh, and I think I was. Uh, I think I basically spawned straight in Daggerfall. Um, and I did a load of quests um, and gained a few levels before I even did any fighting. You know, it was just just kind of story driven quests. That are, yeah, that were quite interesting. So that I think that's that's if you like existing in a world and you liked Skyrim. And you like story-driven stuff? Um, yeah, I think Elder Scrolls Online is going to be a, a pretty interesting game. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to playing it actually. I mean, I've, it's been a long time since I looked forward to playing a a new MMO. Uh, but from what I've played in the beta, I'm yeah, I'm quite looking forward to it. Um, I'll do some footage of it as well. I'll kind of record record the progress that I make. Um, I'm quite one of the things that I'm quite excited about that I really like is the uh, the character uh, the character uh, skill system. Uh, the way it works, different classes, and different weapons, uh, kind of quite reminds me of, um, quite reminds me of Ultra Online actually. The way you can kind of build your character and sort of pick from a, a few, some skills to, you know, maybe create the thing you want rather than being locked into a class. Uh, I quite like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are classes. Each class has three. Uh, skill trees that you can choose from, but but any class can use any weapon you see, and, he, and every weapon has its own set of skills as well. So there's uh, yeah, there's quite a there's quite a, a system there for customization. I'll go into all that more when um, you know when the game comes out and I start playing it. But yeah, so I've, I've pre-ordered that, so I'll be giving that a go. Um, I won't be dropping EverQuest for it, irrespective of what I said earlier on in the video. I'm, so <laughs> I'm still going to be playing. Approaching level thirty, actually, it's quite amazing. Really, it doesn't really uh, once you get back into it. The leveling experience isn't too painful in EverQuest. I think as long as you've got, I think as long as you're in the right area, you know. I mean, at level twenty nine, I think the Centaur Archers are probably a bit low for me. I should be looking at other stuff, but because they're quite low dark blue, it means that you know when I reclaim a pet, I get some mana back, so I'm a bit more efficient because they're not doing as much damage uh, and it just allows me to sort of move on and, and, and kill more mobs um, yeah j j just more efficient I think in, in my killing even though I'm killing stuff that's maybe a bit lower level um, yeah so so as I said I'm, I'm not going to be dropping EverQuest at all <laughs> for the foreseeable future but I will be doing a fair bit of uh, Elder Scrolls Online next week, I think, when it when it comes out. And, I'll, and I'll, as I said, I'll record some videos so you can have a look at it, see what you think. You know, you, I'm sure you'll probably come to any any other quest player <coughs> who's been on uh, P99 for a period of time will probably feel the same way. The challenge is essentially non-existent unless you force yourself into doing these some big bosses. Um, but you know, but but it's but it, it's quite story driven and, and it's quite it seems to be quite a nice world to explore. That's uh, that's sort of the way it felt felt to me anyway when I was playing it. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how we go. Let's reclaim again. Um, this kind of been my standard fare for the magician. Um, I, I wasn't reclaiming um, up to a point, but it feels now as though it's probably the, the most sensible thing to do. You know, I, I'm. I probably need to chuck some mana at this guy so I can, you know, just go on for a bit longer. But yeah, I've, I've got to a point where I think reclaiming and, and getting all the experience is probably a sensible, sensible thing to do. Uh, I'm almost level 30 actually, so maybe I'll uh, I'll keep this video going till uh, till level 30. If anyone else is going to be playing Elder Scrolls Online, 
uh, you know, give me a shout. Maybe we can we can sort of hook up in game. I've kind of um, I've kind of got the basis for my character. I'm going to be doing. I'm probably going to be playing a, a dragon knight. It'd probably be a be a, be a probably be a dark elf. Um, I can't remember what faction they're on because the game's split into factions, of course, because there's a quite a big PvP element as well. So I'll have to check. I can't remember what faction they're on, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll get involved in PvP too much anyway. Um, am I heading north? No, I'm heading west. That's north, kinda. Uh, I'm looking for I'm looking for a, a blue aviac, or there's a rook there, but it's a light blue. Looking for a dark blue centaur or aviac. Um, or a bull elephant that, that would work just as well. Yeah, so if you're playing Elder Scrolls Online, give me a shout. Um, as I said, I'm going to be a, probably going to be a, uh, a dark elf dragon knight. I think to start off with, um, I quite look at a templar as well. Or if, if I was going to be a templar, I'd probably choose a. Uh, I'd probably be an orc actually. If I was going to be a templar, I've kind of been looking at different things in, within the game to do, and there seems to be a. Um, a clear distinction at the moment between the power of classes. Um, it seems as though the sorcerers are, are very powerful at the moment, apparently, from what I've read. Um, others not so much. Uh, I, I was kind of looking at maybe playing a tank class. Um, yeah, just a just a, a real tanky tank who, uh, yeah, just just can just keep himself going for uh, long periods of time. I don't think it particularly would be great at soloing. Uh, you know. Uh, world boss mobs and stuff. I think uh, I think the range classes of uh, are pretty OP with regards to um, soloing sort of tough stuff. You know, the it's weird because the, the crowd control is pretty obscene in it. To be honest with you, I mean, I've seen some YouTube videos of of the range classes, uh, sorcerers and um, archers, that kind of thing. You know, just being able to to keep a a, a world boss mob, you know, some of the toughest mobs in the game at the moment, like just sort of locked down, basically. Um, yeah, so, so they don't take any damage at all. I'm, I'm, you'd kind of hope they'd, they'd do something about that, maybe introduce some mechanics that means it's not that simple, but, you know, I don't think that's kind of, uh, I think they, I think, uh, you know, I think obviously you'd hope someone designing an MMO nowadays would want it to be challenging, but I don't think they want it to be as challenging in a way that we that you know maybe sort of you know us playing um uh, p99 want it to be i'm not sure if uh, if that's kind of what they're what they're going for um but yeah but it's but it's certainly uh certainly seems to be a problem at the moment the cc in the, in the game the classes that have it uh is quite powerful and, and and you can keep a really really strong uh boss mob kind of locked down essentially so it doesn't do any damage to you um so it'd be interesting to see. I mean, it's weird the fact that it's a PvP game as well throws up its own issues. Uh, sorry, and I'm talking about another game when I'm playing EverQuest, but it's just <laughs> you know, um, that's just the way it's worked out. Yeah, it's um, because it's a PvP game as well. You f you find that uh, the developers kind of um, we're going to get quite a lot of mana back here for reclaiming, which is going to be pretty awesome. You find the developers kind of. Uh, yeah, kind of balance the game and the classes also. So you, not only are they trying to balance the game based on PvE, but also based on PvP as well, and that could be a recipe for disaster because of the PvP element. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I won't be at all surprised if, um, uh, you know, if there's a, an awful lot of tuning of classes uh, throughout, especially throughout the uh, the first year or so. Hopefully, it's not too bad because I don't like that. But you know, we'll uh, we'll see. <coughs> so there's a centaur archer up there. I'm almost level, uh, almost level thirty. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can get a get a ding out of this mob here. I noticed they took the they took the swirly lights off uh, when you level. I don't think it was particularly classic anyway. So yeah, don't really have too much of a problem with that. Um, Let's pull this dude. There we go. Now this might be our level 30 mob. Or I might need one more. I guess if I'm going to, you know, I mean, as I said, Fizzwell is just a character that I log into every now and again just to muck around with, so I can't imagine 
I'll do much more leveling with him at the moment after this. I need to get back onto my shamans and, you know, start sort of uh, making a bit, a bit of progress there again. I've had a funny, funny week, actually. A funny couple of weeks, actually, uh, with health and stuff. Sort of just all these cold bar bugger. The worst, that's what you just don't want to see as a magician. Is a, a social mob wandering past. Uh, although, actually, I was quite lucky there. <laughs> so here we go, you see, the archer's at 3%. And it's uh, it wasn't it wasn't running from a mob, so that's from a pet. So that's got to be a... There we go. So that's got to be a bug, I would have thought. Not sure. Yeah, I've had a strange couple of weeks anyway, so partly why I haven't been playing too much. Just loads of bugs and stuff um, going around in the winter as, as they do. And, yeah, kind of just been knocked for six a couple of times uh, over the course of the winter. But also, I had to go to the doctor's day because I've been, I've been getting two or three times over the, the past sort of couple of months, I've kind of been getting getting chest pains. And I think it's all linked to just the bugs and stuff that are going around but you do but obviously you know you do think to yourself well at my age starting to get chest pains I probably need to go and speak to the doctor because it might be something a bit more than that um, and I went to the doctor today and she yeah she didn't seem to think it was a heart thing uh, she's booked me in to uh, have an ECG next week just as a, a precautionary measure but she seemed to think that it was probably just uh, to do with the bugs and illness over the course of uh, over the course of the uh, um yeah, over the winter, but it's quite weird that it does. It does. It does make you think about your mortality a bit more. You know, sort of how, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, how easily things can just, uh, yeah, just sort of, uh, just go. Really, I think probably. Yeah, it does kind of make you feel, you feel a bit more, a bit more human. I think a bit more. Yeah, not invincible. <laughs> not about anyone else, because you, you know, they do, they do, do go through life sometimes thinking I'm sort of a bit invincible. Um, yeah, but uh, but that sort of thing makes you think about yeah about things a bit more. You realise you need to maybe take a bit more care of yourself. Yeah, any young men out there? That's the that's the, that's the uh, yeah <laughs> that's the advice. <laughs> do plenty. Make sure you do plenty of exercise and uh, yeah, eat sensibly. Anyway, guys, I think I'll end the video here on that on that note, um, and I'll be back soon with some more footage. Thanks for watching.